Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Final Final Fears. We're going to be blasting Pig Destroyer, Painter of Dead Girls. I fucking love, love, love this comp. Like, so many good covers, like, and just amazing tracks. Pre-relapse Pig Destroyer is fucking sick. I still wish they grinded this hard instead of adding all the outside elements that, in my opinion, plague releases like Head Cage, where it's just like, what the fuck? Like, I, and why would you remaster Prowler in the Yard after saying you weren't gonna do it? Just, ah, uh, I'm glad I have an original version, but yeah. Pig Destroyer, Painter of Dead Girls on Robotic Empire. So fucking good. And the cover art back in the early 2000s. Um, fucking, oh my god. Chris Taylor. You could see this art everywhere. So many people have used Chris Taylor in the past. Great artist. And I really, really dig his work. Super, super sick, and yeah, I love this comp right here. It's amazing. I think some of these tracks ended up on uh, 38 Counts of Battery, but like you have a fucking like helmet cover on here. The Dwarfs, the Stooges, this is great stuff. I used to have the LP. I actually have the sleeve up there. But finally, we are getting to the new Eternal Rot EP, Cadaverin. And fuck yes, murky, absolutely bone shattering death metal. This is such a fucking step up from the seven inch. And I, I don't mean that in a negative way at all. The seven inch is awesome, but cadaverin absolutely destroys that EP. Seven inch, whatever you want to call it. Holy shit. From the opening track, Undying Desolution, it just starts at like just a murky snail's pace and it just builds up atmosphere and then just crushes you with just Disgustingly vile vocal deliveries, awesome, awesome riffs, and just great, great use of a drum machine. Like, it's super, super well programmed, and I dig it a lot, actually. But, um, Eternal Rot has artwork by Mark Riddick, in case you didn't know. And, um, yeah. This kind of sums it up very nicely. Disgusting doom death from the grave. They make some very nice t-shirts as well. But this is definitely an awesome, awesome release here. I dig it a lot. I'm stoked God's of War Productions put this beast out. And these two maniacs are exactly that. Two fucking death dealers that just managed to fucking write some really really sick songs from 2013 to 2018 in the tomb of eternal rot i think that's satanic audio and yep and this is just seriously such a fucking amazing step up from uh grave grooves it's a lot more serious like and just heavier like wow the production on here is great but the songwriting wow like definitely a massive step up i mean like grave grooves is two songs i mean you get a nice little taste but five years later you have a much more developed idea of what eternal rot is going for and that is disgustingly murky heavy death doom metal and oh man they nailed those fucking spikes in the christ wrists on this one 
or in their instance, nailed the coffin shut. Fuck yeah. This is a perfect example for anyone, again, if you are new to, like, Death Doom Metal, like, I wouldn't start with Cyanide or something like that. I mean, I probably would, but I highly recommend this for veterans and rookies of the underground together. It's one of those releases that it's gnarly, but it's gnarly enough that, yeah, it's fucking super, super sick. But at the same time, it's accessible. Like, you don't need to be, you know, completely in the know when it comes to Death Doom Metal of, like, what's super sick and what's not. This has you covered as it's fucking sick. It sounds literally bone-crushingly disgusting, and I love it in that aspect. But most of all, the riffs and the vocal deliveries, along with the songwriting, of course, like... Without having good songwriting, you just have a mess of riffs and vocals that really don't go anywhere. But here, Eternal Rot definitely figured out the sound they were going for, kind of tightened up the image and made things a lot more serious. And it definitely shows. Like, you could tell these two sickos are still having fun and whatnot. But Cadaverin just has this vibe to it that's like underneath all like the sliminess and the heaviness, there's this just love of death metal and doom metal together. And you know, death doom, one of my favorite subgenres of death metal, is taken full advantage of here in the best way possible. Eternal Rot definitely knew what they were going for and absolutely killed it here on these four tracks like seriously undying desolation in their decaying eyes putrid hallucination which is like my personal favorite on here and slowl of death spawn despond fuck my life right <laughs> sergeant stutter but seriously eternal rot Cadaverin is fucking sick and I dig it and if you're a fan of death doom metal I think you're gonna dig it as well but um I do need to apologize to the dude that uh I thought he was being sarcastic about that coffin rock tape and uh but I was talking about a Facebook post not an Instagram post I get it a lot sometimes where, like, a band will send me something and it might be limited or it might have sold out, but I managed to get a copy and people sometimes, they're not very nice about it and say some, like, you know, kind of rude things, but, like, it's kind of passive-aggressively, like, you know, like, for example, my Spectral Voice Blood Incantation 7-inch poster? You have no idea how much shit I got from people because I hung that up when I got that as a gift. Like, I was gifted that by the homies and, like, you would thought that I fucking, you know, dug up George Washington and fucked his corpse with a knife. Like, seriously, like, how dare you hang up a poster of a band you like now i will be honest with you i have not fucked with the cosmetics that come with the hell trilogy box set whatsoever as they deserve to be framed and hung up in like a legit like nice manner instead of here in the crypt like i really feel like you know once I get my own place in the near future, once I set up a bank account, like, I kind of have a plan, and I just need to get it going with this bank account. Because once I have the bank account, we're fucking rolling. Like, seriously, expect way, way better shit and, like, more things, like, when it comes... Like, this year, I know I've been slacking on shows, but that's also because... No offense to Philadelphia, I mean, I'm so glad my buddy Hal and Ron started a production company. 
Um, their first show's coming up, and I'm definitely going to try and make it out to that just to show my support because those two guys are awesome and. It's just one of those things, like, as soon as, like, somebody was like, oh, don't worry, I got the Suffering Hour show under control, I'm like, all right, sick, I get to see Suffering Hour in my hometown. Well, not hometown, my home city, you know? And next thing I know, they're going from fucking Virginia all the way to Rhode Island. Nobody grabbed the Philly date. It's a bummer. And then I, I want to go to this other show, and it's like, hey, um, where's this venue at? Oh, well, you, you gotta, um, hit me up closer to the show date so I can give you the address. I'm 34. I'm not a narc. But I don't want to be around a bunch of 16-year-olds drinking. Like, it's just like, let's get a real venue. Come on. As much as I love that, like, crust lifestyle, I lived it. I'm a little bit older now, like... If I went to a basement show and let's say the house got raided and I'm the oldest fucking guy there, guess who gets in trouble for all the alcohol and shit? This fucking guy. Unless, you know, there's other people that are over 21 and they take the rep for it or it's their house, like... But otherwise, I'm proper fucked. And I used to love playing basement shows. I used to love going to basement shows. But nowadays, it's like, like, especially booking, like, you know, like, real deal bands, like, yeah, it's awesome, packing in a tight basement, but, like, don't make it bring your own bottle, it adds just, like, your house is gonna get shut down, I understand, like, you wanna have, like, a party house and whatnot, but, like, when you get older, it's just, like, I want to go to a venue and enjoy myself. Not have to worry about the cops kicking the door down. Some neighbor coming in with a fucking shotgun. I I've been in some sketchy situations playing house shows. Like, I remember when I was in a band, we played this venue called the Halfway House in West Philadelphia. It was right next to a legit Halfway House. And very, very sketchy area, but... Great, one of the best shows I've ever played. But, like, seeing, like, a 13-year-old, like, drinking a Hurricane 40 on a couch, it was kind of like a scene from Gummo, but, like, in real life. And it was just like, whoa, fucking, you know, you probably should wait a little bit to drink, but whatever. We had a great time, and it was a great show. So, you know, you guys are all young. Enjoy yourselves. But, heartburn. When it comes to, like, real bands bands, like, I missed fucking foreign, because I didn't know where the fucking address was. Like, ugh. I, I was so pissed off. Like, and I don't even think it, like, the one place is, like, on top of a bar. And... That they don't want the address out because I guess they don't card to drink and it is what it is I understand but like years and years of drinking has jaded me on the whole thing and I'm just at this point weed saves lives I'll stand by Braden Savinsky on that all day Baker 3 Baker for life but when it comes to Death Doom Metal, Cadaverin by Eternal Rot has you covered with four fucking grave crawling hymns of total fucking death metal mixed with good old fashioned doomed out fun. Eternal Rot, Cadaverin. And we were blasting the mighty Pig Destroyer. Painter of Dead Girls. I told you, this is a fucking super, super sick little comp here. Like, we have a Stooges cover on for down the street. Fuck yeah. This is, to me, the pig destroyer that I grew up loving in the early 2000s and whatnot. But, as always, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. You fucking rule. Hell.